little bit of Prince may be the best way to start any day, I think. I might need to do that more often. <laughs> so, just going through the schedule today. Hope you guys are having an excellent day. And, uh, or hope you had a good day, depending on when you see this. And um, so, back to the life of real estate on the journey to 40 million with the Muller and Barber team. And uh, a little bit of life along the way. So, just a full day. Um, meeting after meeting after meeting. And unfortunately, most all of it cannot be recorded. Um, just because it's just perspective perspective clients, uh, private clients. Um, there may be a few opportunities in between to talk about some of that stuff. But um, so today's probably going to be a really creative day to try and get in a little bit of the story of, uh, of how we're doing. But um, a lot of good prospecting going on, a lot of good meetings going on this morning. I'm uh, going to start the day off with some coffee and um, a little bit of car wash. stop this morning is the city of Indian Shores working on a piece of property uh, for a client there and uh, part of understanding real estate is you got to understand the zoning um, you got to understand what the allowable uses are and then you also have to even beyond that understand what the city would even like to see there or what their feelings are about building there and um, and that goes for commercial or residential it doesn't make a difference if if you feel like you're gonna build a four-story house uh, you got height restrictions if you feel like you're gonna build up to your lot lines you have restrictions if you feel like you're going to be able to uh, build a garage and park your RV there there's probably gonna be restrictions at the same time for commercial tons of restrictions access ingress egress uh, how the fire department is even going to be able to get in there if there's an emergency if you have multiple units so there's a lot to it and um, unless you're in it every day you're not going to know the right questions to ask so uh, I'm going to go see the building guys and girls and um, ask a bunch of questions so here we go <music> So super good meeting uh, with our friend Julie Folden and uh, we're teaming up on a property that has a couple different components to it and super excited about that. Love the fact that our company is, uh, it fosters a culture of, uh, of advisors working together. Uh, how do we get the best team around each property and each client to serve the client and then we'll work the rest out after the fact. And um, the, you know, our company just fosters that and I gotta tell you guys, if you, uh, if you're working for a company that is putting itself interests first above the client, then that's a long-term play for disaster. Is think about the client first, how best do you surround and support them, and through that, your good work will multiply. It's not checkers, it's chess, long game, long game. So it's all about great meeting. All right, on the road again and off to the next one. So here we go. So just about to the showing, um, showing at 1.30 and uh, showing a house in Isle of Capri. And so if you're not familiar with where I do a lot of my work um, and our team does a lot of our work, we're actually up along the beaches in Pinellas County, uh, St. Petersburg, Clearwater Beach, all the way down through Terra Verde and uh, in some of the inland areas like Seminole and Largo and, and uh, in some of those other areas. But anyway, uh, so I am now in Isle of Capri and a lot of the fingers that are out here along the beaches in Pinellas County and the Barrier Islands are man-made. Not a lot of people know that. And um, you know, back uh, in the day, um, they would dredge up 
the intercoastal and they would fill out these fingers and then build houses on them as developments. And Ala Capri is one of those and that's where we're headed today and um, the listing is out there and it's a nice waterfront house. It's a huge house, two story and um, it's great for family. Uh, nice water, does not have a dock, has a pool. And uh, the price point is in the sevens. And let's see, just turned on the street. And you know, you know my saying, which is early is on time, on time is late, and late is unacceptable. Well, I am kind of late today by a minute, one minute. But uh, it's okay because the other agent is not here already, is not here. So. Um, I beat the other agent, so that's good. And I'm just gonna park, and then I'll take you guys on a quick tour. Here we go. All right, so I am here at the showing, and this is what people are buying, is that water. That's really what it's all about. Uh, that's the first thing people care about, and once they get their heads through that, then they can start focusing on the house and figure out if it's gonna work for them. It's a great house. It's uh, four bedrooms, four baths. It's over 3,000 square feet. It is offered at 749, and uh, basically that comes out to about 236 bucks a foot, and that is a deal. That is quite the deal, but it's beautiful. Look at that open water out there. Just a gorgeous place. So it's part of what we do every day. We got to uh, to sell, and I'm out here selling. I love it. Wouldn't do anything else. So uh, looks like they're here. Got to go. Are you telling me we're under contract? What? Oh my gosh. The long game, Carl Muller. You and your patience. <laughs> well, you know, God likes to hear from us, so I think maybe he puts the obstacles in front of us so we continue to talk to him, right? Oh my goodness gracious. Well, congratulations, Carl. So not every property um, that goes to market actually um, sells immediately. And it, there's there's a ton of different factors that, that are involved in why something doesn't sell within that initial 30, 60, 90 days. Um, our goal is always within 30 days because statistics and the probability actually shows that once you're past 30 days, your probability of selling the property is in half until you get to day like 120, 180, for the market to maybe come back around to you or for you to get a price change or for the right buyer to hit the market. Um, so, you know, but we do have sellers that are very um, uh, focused on wanting a particular outcome when it comes to price. And price really is one of the main drivers of why a property will stay on the market for an extended period of time. And, um, and so being patient and understanding and being self-aware and being aware of your client and their needs and what their goals are is very important and to not get frustrated but to remain patient and uh, like we talked about in, the, in I think the episode one or two before is the two marshmallow rule is you know not everything is going to work right now but I'm willing to wait I'm willing to be patient I'm willing to put in the time I'm willing to spend the um, the energy and the effort and remain focused on whatever the client's desire is, but always being authentic, transparent, real, giving real feedback, never ever um, misleading in any way, but being very honest and truthful. And if that requires that, if that means you're gonna lose deals, then guess what? It's better to be transparent and authentic than to, uh, and, and lose deals than to stay in deals that are never gonna work out because it's gonna hurt you in the long run. And, um, and so, uh, my business partner Carl was able to put uh, two deals together in the last two days that have taken us um, quite a while to get there but we waited and we were patient and we found the right buyers we never gave up and uh, and the client I think is going to be happy in the end so both clients so be patient but be focused and, uh, and always be moving forward <laughs> 